Hello there and welcome to this series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at how we'll split up a partial fraction when there is a repeated factor on the denominators. So we can answer questions from exercise 1e. So in this case we have the question where we're looking to split up the partial fraction of 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 uh, over x plus 1 x minus 5 squared. Now what I mean by repeated factor on the bottom is this x minus 5 here. We have x minus 5 times x minus 5 effectively on the bottom. Now I'm just going to show you how we split this up. There is a reason behind all of this and if you try and do it a different way you will come stuck um, in doing it um, an alternative method. This is how you do it. So if you've got uh, an x plus 1 on the bottom, standard is to write a over x plus 1. But when you've got x minus 5 squared, you need to have one term where the x minus 5 is just hanging out on its own. And you need to have a second term where the x minus 5 is being squared. Okay, so it's really important that both of these two terms here are taken into account. Um, if you try and do it another way, you will get stuck. OK, there's a reason for doing it this way. I'm just going to show you that this is the way of doing it. If there was a third power on this x minus 5 here, you would have the first power, a second power, and a third fraction, which would have the third power of x minus 5 on it. OK, so this is how you split up partial fractions when there is a repeated factor on the denominator. And in this case here... Um, we have c over, so b over x minus 5, c over x minus 5 squared. Um, the x plus 1 is just going to hang out at the front on its own, and then it's written like this. Okay. Now what we're going to look at is this question here. 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 over x plus 1 squared, 2x plus 1 into partial fractions. So, if you can remember how we split this up into partial fractions, we need one term that has a power of 1 on the x plus 1, a second term where the x plus 1 is being squared, and a third term where we have c over 2x plus 1. And then we combine these fractions together, and then we group them up again, and then we compare numerators. Okay, so we're going to compare the numerators here. So we're going to get 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 equal a brackets x plus 1, 2x plus 1 plus b bracket 2x plus 1 plus c x plus 1 squared. Now in this case here we need to pick sneaky values of x so that some of the terms will disappear. If we choose x equals minus 1 then the a term will disappear and the c term will disappear. So we'll just be left with the b term. And in this case, we get b is equal to minus 2. If we substitute in x equals minus 5, well, that will get rid of the a term and the b term, so we'll just be left with the c term. Be careful that you're going to do minus 0 0.5, add 1, find that value, and then square it. So we get 0.25c, uh, sorry, divide that by 0.25, I mean, so then we get c is equal to 3. Now, we're a bit stuck here now because the a term, if we use minus 1, it's going to disappear. And if we use minus 0 0.5, it's going to disappear as well. But there's no other real sneaky values that we could use to get the b and the c to disappear without the a disappearing as well. So what we should do, suggest you do here is to just use a really easy value for x. Maybe x is 1 or x is 0. Um, if you've already used both of those, then maybe use x is 2. But just use any value of x, and then use your values of b and c as well to come in and help you out. So in this case here, when we use 0, we get 5 equals 1a plus 1b plus 1c. But we know what b and c are, so we can use them. So a minus 2 plus 3, and then move that all onto one side, and we get a is 4. Okay, so and this will always happen when you've got a repeated factor, and if you've done it correctly like this, where you have to just use some easy value of x to work out a, or maybe it might be b or c by that point, um, where you use your other two, maybe three values that you've previously worked out. Okay. All right then, so now all that's left for us to do is to write the final answer, which is the fractions with a, b, and c substituted in. So we've got 4 over x plus 1 minus 2 over x plus 1 squared <coughs> plus 3 over 2x plus 1. 
Okay, so that's the answer to this question here then. So it's your turn now. So pause the video and have a go at this one then, everyone. All right then, so let's have a go at this question here now then. So the first thing we would do is we would write out what the answer is. It's a over x plus 1, so a power of 1 on this x plus 1, a second term with x plus 1 squared on the bottom, and another term with x minus 1 on the denominator. Okay. Now, instead of combining all these fractions together again here, what I can do is a very sneaky multiplication, which is times by x plus 1 squared, x minus 1. On the left-hand side, this will just leave me with minus x squared minus 10x minus 5. This is effectively an alternative method to combining these three fractions together again. If I was to times this fraction here by x, x plus 1 squared x minus 1, what I'll end up with is uh, my one of the x plus 1s will cancel out from the top and the bottom, but one of them won't. So I'll just have a brackets x plus 1 x minus 1. On this term here, if I times this term by x plus 1 squared x minus 1, x plus 1 squared will cancel out from the top and the bottom, so I'll just be left with b x minus 1. And on the c term here, if I times the top and the bottom by x plus 1 squared x minus 1, the x minus 1s will cancel out from the top and the bottom, but the x plus 1 squared will still be there. Okay, so now I can start substituting in my sneaky values of x. Let's substitute in x equals 1, and in this case, when I substitute in 1, I'm going to use my calculator, just so I don't get wrong, I get minus 16. And in this case, it will cancel out the a term, it will cancel out the b term, and all we'll be left with is the c terms. 1 plus 1 is 2, and 2 squared is 4, so it would be 4c. So c here is equal to minus 4. Let's substitute in now another sneaky value of x, let's call it minus 1. So in this case here, let's plug minus 1 into this left hand side here and we get 4. It will cancel out the a term because we've got the x plus 1 bracket. It won't cancel out the b term and this will give me minus 2b and it will cancel out the c term because I've got x plus 1 squared. So in this case here, b is equal to minus 2. And now that's all that's left for us to do is to calculate a. Well, in this case, if I use um, any of these values to try and cancel out the b or the c term, it will also cancel out the a term. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use an easy value of x. Let's use x equals 0. So in this case, I get minus 5 equals, let's substitute in 0 here, we get minus a. Let's substitute in 0 here, I get minus b. Let's substitute in 0 here, and I get plus c. Replace b and c with what you know them to be. So it's going to be minus a minus minus 2, so that would be plus 2, and plus c, which is minus 4. So I get a minus 4 there. Um, combine these two together with minus 2, add 2 onto the other side, and you get minus 3. Equals minus a, so a is equal to 3. Okay. So now all that's left for us to do is to write out our final answer at the top here with a's, b's, and c's substituted in. So it's going to be 3 over x plus 1 uh, plus b, so that would be minus 2 over x plus 1 squared plus c, which is minus 4 over x minus 1. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to these uh, this question here then. So have some practice on exercise 1e. Get used to the fact you have to create a single power of your repeated factor and a squared power of your repeated factor and a cubed power if you need a cubed power. Okay, so this here is the key point for this video. When you've got a repeated factor, x plus 1 squared on a denominator, you have to create two terms, one that's x plus 1 on the bottom, one that's x plus 1 squared on the bottom of the other one. Thanks very much for watching.